legendary Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin. Dude, Mr. Skin. 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 Hey everyone, welcome to episode 16 of the Mr. Skin Podcast. I'm Andrea Lowell and today we have an incredible show. We're going to talk about TV nude scenes. We're going to dig deep into X-Rated 2, the greatest adult stars of all time. Find out who Emily Mead is and pull the top down on the top three horror uh, movie nude scenes according to Mr. Skin. So without further ado, how are you Mr. Skin? Doing good, Andrea. How are you? I'm great. I'm in such a good mood today. No technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was funny no last week. Titties. Yeah, no, well, I want to tell you something. I have good news about your sweaty breasts. Because last Ooh. week, Andrea was so flustered. That she was having all these technical difficulties. So we literally were waiting like a half hour on her to to figure it out from L.A. And I, I of course, am in Chicago with Maddie D and CP here. And uh, yeah, you got we the were whole waiting. crew we were, to help We were you. patiently waiting, but she would admitted that in all the uh, excitement you got sweaty breasts well they were so sweat i'm talking dripping with beads of sweat <laughs> you know it's funny i um when we were when that was going on i joked that oh man uh in honor of your sweaty breasts we have to make a playlist at mrskin.com for sweaty breasts and yeah, Daddy. i literally <laughs> was on the website today and i'm like holy shit we made a playlist for sweaty breasts it was awesome so we actually if you go to our website have a playlist for sweaty breasts uh sweaty breasts nude scenes for movies so that is incredible thank you for doing that because yeah it's just even though i was stressed out and the, the situation i was in wasn't necessarily sexy it is sexy to look at. So I'm very happy that we made that playlist. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's funny because um, there's so many, there are so many nude scenes from uh, uh, movies where actresses were sweaty. And I asked Maddie D, I said, like, how did our guys pull that up so quick and get so many good ones? And mm -hmm. Um, they were able to search the keyword sweaty boobs at our website. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, cause one of the things we've done, I did this a few years ago and it was probably, um, one of the, the greatest things ever done at, at mrskin.com because what happened over time, uh, we were maybe 15 years into the website. You know, we're now 17 years and we had so much data in our website, this huge database, oh, but I it can just got imagine. to the point. Well, yeah, it got to the point where it was just, there was so much stuff here. And yeah, we curate and we put things on the front page of the site, but, um, the problem was that there was so much other stuff that we want to show people, but how do you how do you dig that up? Yeah, there's, it's there's like just so much like your, and yeah, your average guy comes to the website and he's like, oh, I'll search Angelina Jolie or Gwyneth Paltrow or boom, boom. And then he's like, that, you know, even though there's 27,000 actresses, then what do you do? Yeah, you um, get lost in a sea of titties and vagines, right? You <laughs> yeah, just get so lost. We, <laughs> yeah. So what we did is we literally had six people we hired, we, you know, skin turns that came in. They were, uh, summer helpers. They started as summer helpers and became, um, actually almost, almost full time because they were here so long. And I don't, do you remember, Maddie, how long they were here? You know who I'm talking about, the people that went in and did the keywords for Dude, us. What yeah, a great it, job for summer helpers. When I was oh. a summer helper, quote unquote, I was like pet sitting for people. And you have people there <laughs> yeah. for the, for the summer, uh, looking at the best boobs and butts in the biz. Oh. Oh, That's well, a great we, gig. We we just paid them in lube, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> but we uh, but no. What they did is they went through every picture, every oh. video in wow. our database, and you're talking hundreds of thousands wow. of them. And these six uh, troopers, if you will, making. Ten dollars an hour, not too shabby. Not that, that's um, not shabby at all. No, they made ten bucks an hour. It took them. Do you remember, Maddie, how long it took? I think it took a couple of years. All all. Oh told. my god! Oh years? no, it was. No, it was so much because not only what they had to do oh is like, God. let's say there's a nude scene and there was like a red balloon in the scene. They right. had to, to, you know, type in red balloon or they look in like it might say um, lampshade, like someone was wearing a lampshade on their head or whatever <laughs> it was. Any key things that happened in the nude scene, they had to write them down and, you know, type them into a, into a thing. So now you could go to our website and let's say you're into chicks naked on a balcony. Ooh. You just search, you, you just go to our, um, here, I'm going to do it right now. Balcony. Nice. You just nice. go and it says like, you could search any nude scene 
on a balcony, nude on a balcony, sex on a balcony, <gasps> falls off a balcony, jumps off a balcony, topless All on a balcony. All with nudity. All with nudity. It's freaking amazing. And, and that's just because of the work of these of these proud Americans <laughs> you know that came what? into our office. Yes. God bless America. If yes. this is what we're producing, I'm on board with this. Now, you know, Mr. Skin, I love talking to you every week, but where in the hell is our third host, Jimmy? Oh, I, I'm yes, I'm sorry. Him. No, <laughs> he's not. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, here's the deal. So nothing bad here, but um, Jimmy got called in. He, you know, he also works on Fox for the Kennedy show on Fox Business. And they just said to him, hey, dude, we have to tape something today. And this morning he hit us up and he was all bummed out and he wanted to see if we could switch the time. But just because there's just too many things going on between right. me and Maddie D and the team and you, it was just too hard to move it. So Unfortunately, we're another week without Jimmy. It's a bummer. I like having the uh, um, the yeah, wild humor. Yeah, yeah yes. I guess you could. Say, I, I guess you could say we got assassinated by Kennedy today. But um, the uh, yeah, the problem was. It, listen, here's the deal. I, this is a podcast. I love doing it. You and Jimmy, it's so great. And I think when the whole team's together, it's always the best. But in the end, um, you guys, you and Jimmy, especially, you have other. This isn't your number one. Uh, well, let me tell you what yeah, I did This isn't today, your number though. one job. So when I, that, these things happen occasionally, it's going to come up. I got an email from Playboy TV today. Hey, Uh-oh. can you can you come in at 11? We need uh, we had some edits on some copy because I do all all their voiceovers. And I said, nope, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm doing the <laughs> Mr. Skin podcast. Hey, I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. No. So I prioritize you, Mr. Skin. <laughs> no, that's really no. cool. And, and and listen, uh Jimmy felt terrible. It's, I it's know, I'm two just weeks in him. a row without Jimmy, which is a bummer, but um, but we'll you know, survive. the show must go on. Yeah, nudity yes. nudity never sleeps. We now, have to we have to continue. So, I want to yeah. remind our listeners, we do have a phone number if they want to call and leave us a voicemail. That's 304 Talk Skin. If you have any specific nudity question, whether it's a scene in a movie or if it's someone's a body double, or if you have some insight or want a category that we haven't seen of or heard of yet, give us a call, 304 Talk Skin. If you're lucky, we'll play your message on air and Mr. Skin will answer it off the top of his head because that's just how amazing. You are. And of course, Mr. Skin Podcast.com is our safe for work website. And on there, you'll find the links to the good stuff. So I say let's get right into it. Well, before we do, I want to, uh, there was a, a pretty cool Twitter post by uh, the Andrea Lowell. Oh. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, I bought to suck your blood. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, was cool. I to suck your I, blood. Yes. If you, if you aren't, uh, if you're not following Andrea on Twitter, please do so Im- immediately. She posted an incredibly hot, uh, bikini shot with a little blood dripping from her, uh, her mouth. Uh, can my you lips. elaborate on that? Is that your Halloween costume this year? You know, I was just farting around with some fun <laughs> Halloween makeup and I was just like, you know what? Might as well make this sexy and throw on a, a skimpy bathing suit that might be illegal in some countries. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was there was not much of a bathing suit there. And yeah. Then there was a uh, Maddie D. Also reminded me about one of you. Um, you, were, I can't, I don't see, I can't tell who you were with, but you, um, you had your hair like in a in a braid it was from playboy tv your hair was braided over your head it was a really sexy dress you were wearing do you oh, remember that one yes yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, oh yes, yeah yes. i was with uh, brett rossi who is charlie sheen's ex fiance who is one oh. of my great friends she's an adult performer but i'm also her personal trainer so we've known each other about a decade and uh, we're pretty good friends so yeah, yeah she's super hot and yes there was no underwear under that dress which was the no, most I... feedback i got <laughs> yeah i was gonna say underwear would have yeah there's it no way you could have got it underwear was just too skin tight it was like that dress was literally body painted on (laughs) yeah no that's awesome but if you're not uh if you aren't following andrea please do so because she posts some good stuff uh the andrea lowell uh, thank you love and follow mr skin at mr skin (laughs) oh yeah yeah well you will not see me in uh in those kind of outfits that's for sure it would be so funny if whatever i posted you did your interpretation of (laughs) we just mirrored each other's wearing a thong and then i'd wear it backwards like with the (laughs) skinny part in the front yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh my god you're hilarious now last 
last <laughs> night I've been feeling bad because you know Shameless is one of my favorite shows and I've been doing the good wife thing and been waiting for my husband to get home to watch it so I mm-hmm. was missing it by the time we talked about it Monday morning and I said you know what fuck him I'm gonna watch this in real time so we can talk about it in its entirety and not just uh, talk about the nudity I was blown away last night well, with uh, the, the yeah. Russian chick is Adora Goreshter Yes, oh yes. My God. So, just and you, you actually are I'm ahead of fan. me on the, on the show, so you could even um, I elaborate fill you more. In, but baby. but yes. here's what happens: I go in. What I do is on Monday morning after all the nudity, I watch some shows, but there's so many shows I can't watch Dude, everything. There's not so, enough time in the day for you, <laughs> right? And I I go in and talk to our content department. So there's eight people back there. So I'll go through the ones. So I didn't watch Shameless Sunday night, but I will with my wife. Um, mm-hmm. But there was a scene where this Isadora Gorishter, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, either. probably <laughs> not, but now she lives with Kevin and Veronica, the, that's um, Shanola, Shanola Hampton, you know, they kind of have like yes. a three-way relationship going, they, which they I They actually have a love. three-way awesome. marriage. Veronica yeah. is married to the, her, and I forgot her, her character's name. And, yeah, I don't know. And, but she's also married to Kevin. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's a three-way marriage. They're having threesomes. They're co-parenting. I mean, it's uh, it's a wild situation. Well, it's a dream situation for any man. I'm looking at all the nude scenes from last night because that's my job in the morning. So first of all, I see her in a in a like a uh, wife beater t-shirt, no bra, spraying yes. herself with a hose. So right away, uh, I'm, my, my eyes are like all over that because I'm a big fan of the wet t-shirt. Uh, it's my one of my you know, just one of my personal things I'm really into, especially in the wife beater. Love it. So 100%. she does that. Mm-hmm. But then um the other thing that caught my eye was, <laughs> and I need more of a backstory on this because I was like, as I was quizzing the guys in content, like, tell me more about this. So Steve uh, Howie, who plays Kevin, there's a scene where you have... um Isadora in this bondage outfit, Shanola Hampton, who's sexy as hell, the black girl in a in a bondage outfit. Oh, she's and so this hot. Freaking dude. Steve Howie is like got the ball in the mouth. He's crawling around the room. A I think they were trying tail to tail and a saddle. Yeah, they were making him be a horse, and I and he's crawling around. It's so freaking hot. Uh, uh, not that uh, not that I would ever want to do something like that. No. But well, um, my first question was: Is that one of the what? yeah? yeah. <laughs> is that one of the, the the horseplay butt plugs, or was that a strap on tail? I'm uh, yeah, hoping it was a strap on tail for his sake. Uh, yeah, it could easily have been a butt plug the way that was going. But what is that? What's the, give me the context okay. of what was going on there? So basically, Kevin and V, Veronica, the married couple insulted right. the Russian wife's father. Traditionally in the Russian culture, according to her, was that when you insult someone's father, you have to fuck a horse. So uh. instead of making him actually commit bestiality and fuck a horse, they set it up so they have this wild BDSM three-way where Kevin is role-playing as a horse and giddy up partner, shit was hot. Yeah, you know, hot. you don't see I the sex, say- but you see the setup. And her, the Russian wife, just in that super sexy Dom outfit, owning the part with the whip in her hand, commanding yes, him what yes. to do, telling V to jump on his back and make him gallop. I mean, it right. was so sexy. Yes. Yeah. And, and I got to say, Shameless just, they're it's in their what, seventh dude. season. And yes. it's just, it just continues to amaze. I, I just, they, there, there's always something we talked about it last week, how great the nudity is. And it's yeah. just consistently one of the great shows of all time. Now, let me ask you a question. I know sure. we got a ton of stuff to get to, but this whole menage thing, I think a mm-hmm. lot of guys out there, that are listening, you know, we all have the fantasy, hey, we're married, or maybe we could have a menage with someone. Right. The reality is, it, it takes <laughs> a certain type of person or a certain type of relationship to pull that off, where you right. could actually do it and still be normal or move on or I don't and know what not, the... And not feel feelings of jealousy or guilt or shame or awkwardness. So I am pr- probably the most well-versed in threesomes um, yes. of anyone I know. More, more than it, me. It really takes... The woman having one, full self-esteem and confidence, and two, having a desire to be with another woman. She has to be the catalyst for the three-way. It can never be the guy's idea because we'll always have it in the back of our head. Oh, my God, he wants another woman, even though we all know guys like right. new, new cooch. We, we know the truth of it. Just don't verbalize it. Don't say it. So, guys, if you're listening and you want a three-way, you're going to have to somehow subliminally, subconsciously plant the seed in your wife or girlfriend to make it her think it's her idea and then it will be fine or it is her idea 
<laughs> I've always my thing was like I'd I'd like negotiate like a three way with my wife. I'd be so excited, and then she'd say, Ooh. "Yeah, as long as it's with another guy." And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, so I totally screw it up on the negotiation, <laughs> but whatever. Hey, yeah. you know what though? Maybe you do it in order to get the two chicks. I mean, there's sometimes well, that's what marriage is. It's compromise skin. You know this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and believe me, I, I do almost anything, but whatever. It's, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, it, a lot of uh, male, 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 female threesomes happen where the guys don't actually interact they're not making out they're not doing each other they're literally doing the eiffel tower high-fiving um over yeah. the chick. so you can kind of yeah. use that in the back of your mind too you're not necessarily making out with a dude skin if it was with another guy and he went to high five, I do the thing where I'd put my hand behind my head, like I fake the high five and put it. No, I, I just, I just don't see that. Wiping the your two hair guy, back. The two guy five, I don't think is going to happen. So my, uh, my last note on Shameless was this was oh, yeah. Emmy Rossum's first time directing the show and the biggest fear you have when a female is directing that she isn't going to capture that raw sexiness. And I think she actually succeeded and even far surpassed my expectations because that scene with Isabel or uh, Isadora rather mm-hmm. doing the wet t-shirt contest was so hot that I actually yeah. got physically turned on watching it. So Ooh. I say big double thumbs up to Emmy Rossum for directing not only a fantastic episode, but really killing and nailing uh, what is hot. It, I well, was my, very impressed. my only complaint with Emmy Rossum directing is I want her in front of the camera, not behind the camera. I was thinking that too. Yeah, yeah I, was I want to see she, she hasn't done a nude scene this season and she was six, six for six. Uh, for you know six what? Seasons, so. Maybe that major, major whole enchilada lip slip scared her. Well, wait till uh, Anatomy fully... Awards in February. The <laughs> yeah. lip slip that will that, that's a double lip. That was a Homer Simpson. That was a that double was a lip taco slip. Yeah. slip. Yeah, that, that was, was <laughs> a lips. A... That was a lip slips. So anyway, <laughs> so right, maybe that anyway. maybe that scared her off. So moving on. Shameless was great last night, as it always is. Yeah, name but, a show, uh, and I'll tell you what happened because I got the whole uh, scoop on everything from now, last night. I'm so. catching up myself on Westworld. I'm far yes. behind, but I'm catching up. So filming on episode four yeah i'll give you a brief because we got a lot of tv stuff so i'll give you the brief uh thing so ed harris is up to up to no good if you've been watching westworld we're, we're not sure what's going on there's there's something he's trying to figure out with all the hosts and uh this girl um ingrid burdell that has a snake tattoo over her whole body that mm-hmm. that could be a clue to something now one of the thing i don't want to do on this show is i'm about the nudity and i don't want to get into i know a lot of people tivo this stuff and i don't want to uh, say Spoil too much. It. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's shitty to do to people. But I will say that it was a nice topless scene. He was uh, spying on this girl uh, at you know by the by the water. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, again, Westworld is going to have a lot of nudity. It already has. And um, this was a pretty sexy scene. I'm a big fan of the spy uh, thing. But her name the is uh, Ingrid. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, I love that. But it's Ingrid uh, Burdell who is naked, and that was Ed Harris spying on her. And for for those of you who hasn't haven't seen the show yet. Uh, there's some significance to that, but... Um, but that's all you I, need I, to know. I, yeah, her, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, check that out. That was Westworld last night. Um, I should mention HBO has a show called High Maintenance, which we haven't... I don't even know if we've talked about it I don't it know yet. that I've even heard of it. It's season one. There's six episodes in. It's... um. I think it's Friday nights. Is that correct? I tape these damn things. So I, I think it's Friday nights. So okay. anyway, um, the story, the the high maintenance, the basic, this Ben Sinclair, his character name is the guy. They, he doesn't even have a character name, but I guess he he created it and he's a, a weed delivery guy. Oh, and love he, him. <laughs> yeah. And he, <laughs> each episode, he goes around to different people to deliver the weed and they kind of, that's the show and he, you know, he interacts with them. Well, this week he hooked up with this... Uh, a couple that were kind of like um, nudist or naturist <laughs> people in this. Yeah. This Cynthia Granville did not care. This is a very graphic full frontal scene because she's so like hippie. She's an older hippie babe. Now, is she someone of note? Has she been in other no, stuff? I she, don't know no, the name. No, Cynthia we checked Granville. It out. She, yeah, okay. she's, so she's, she made um, her debut doing a full frontal? Yes. She's, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's brazen. I love that. You yes. go, girl. How old do you think she is? Well, it's never too late is our motto here no, at MrSkin.com. But if if I had to guess, I'd say late 40s, maybe early 50s. I don't know. Nice. And we're seeing... She might be older than me, which, uh, you know, is... 
getting up there. But now we're seeing full boobs, full bush. I, yeah, I'm checking and that this is out not now. American. I don't that's a, think that that's is American. not American. No, no, that's, I, I think she's really that's hippie truly bush. a hippie. Yeah. That looks yeah, all natural to me. I, I like it's, her. <laughs> it's interesting, and I'm a big fan uh, now. She is a little older, but I'm a big fan of b- the contrast between the blonde hair and the brown bush. Because right. I remember back in the day, like in high school, when I'd be with a, a blonde and then you you never, ever get blonde pubes, Steens. You know, you'd always very get... Very rarely. Very rarely. So you go, you're with a blonde girl, and this is, you know, in the 80s, so she would have the brown bush. But I right. love that because it's, it's a certain... Blondes just have a different color bush and she she's yeah. reminding me of those glory those glory <laughs> oh, days in the 80s with my back. with my blonde girls back in the 80s so yeah my it's favorite blonde time. bush of all time was pamela anderson's it wasn't a centerfold it was a pictorial she did in playboy where she was nude on the beach with seashells and sand all over her but it was clearly oh, yeah. bleached pubic hair but it was one of i mean it, it will be forever ingrained in my mind as one of the hottest bushes of all time and it was because it was so blonde yeah <laughs> i no, love, I love it yeah, I love it. So anyway, that's um, High Maintenance Friday Nights on HBO. There's six episodes into their first season, and I haven't talked much about it, but they haven't had too much. But this is a very, very good uh, nude scene if you want to check it out. Yes, it's uh, it's amazing. Now, tell me about Black Mirror. What's going on there with the nudity? Oh, well, the guys in content were telling me. I didn't even actually know too much about it. They're actually three seasons in. It's a Netflix show, and it's... um. I guess they described it to me as like the smartphone generation's Twilight Zone. So there's these weird, Ooh, um, it's like I our like modern that. day Twilight Zone type of show. And nice. um, the, in this particular episode, uh, Maddie, yeah, you put the pics up. This um, girl's name is uh, Larice Harrison. Nobody ever heard of, but she's a super hot black chick. And yes, she is. Th- the first two seasons, they really didn't have much. And all of a sudden, this, this guy was being, um, it had something to do with... Um, he was being uh, interrogated or something with uh, he, he's like a soldier or something like that. And he's okay. having flashbacks. So this is a a flashback um, that he's having. It's like an, a hallucination. And this g- girl is oh. we actually saw this and all the guys were like, you got to talk about this on the podcast because I don't know if a lot of people know this nude scene, but it's called Black Mirror on Netflix. Gorgeous black girl. Now it gets really weird. The scene she multiplies. It's you have to see it. Hey, to understand, if she but, multiplies, looking naked like that, I need to. I need to watch this as soon as this I agree. podcast and is Andrea, over. Those are those are those real. Are real. We were we were watching them, and and she's like one of those where you're like like a black young hot actress oh. whose boobs are so firm yet big. And oh yes, man, those are they great. are yeah. perky and they are heavy perky and they are perfect. And I love how it's shot in that point of view, that POV where he's like right on top of her. This is so exactly hot. yeah so, so it's hot. him it's him kind of hallucinating and uh i guess it turns gets into a group thing but it's, it has to do with like a lot of her start to appear it's weird it's a hallucination but who cares great yeah. nude scene yeah you're right <laughs> it's cares? called uh, uh black mirror on netflix so we're uh we're starting to anxiously uh or, or track it a little harder no pun intended now that, uh, <laughs> that these kind of things are, are going now another thing on netflix i want to talk to you about and one of our favorite gals of all time is chelsea what yes. happened with Chelsea <laughs> Handler and her titties again? She's always you know, in the I, news for her titties. I know she annoys the crap out of some people, but she I used would to annoy me. bang I her so hard. <laughs> I just think she's so sexy. But anyway, um, she was doing a kind of a fake political ad. Uh, for her Chelsea, you know, her um, <laughs> Netflix show, and yeah, it which was is a, great, by the way, a political ad, and it's just part of a fake political ad she did, and <laughs> um, what's funny about it is they pixelate out the baby's head because she's like fake breastfeeding, and then she they pull the baby away, and you see her whole left breast. It's a, it's just a great scene. I'm yeah. laughing because I'm watching this on loop, and it is fucking hilarious. Yeah. So and yeah. it's not only sexy because she has great great boobs and you know we've debated whether or not they're real fake enhanced lifted who cares they're amazing yeah. she loves rocking them and it's just so hilarious because like you said they're pixelating the baby but not i know titty. but not her but not her boobs so anyway there was so chelsea got uh naked again uh this this week on her show and it was uh it's kind of a very funny scene but it's from just you know so it's from a fake political ad she's doing, i so. love that yeah. now i want to switch gears a little bit and i need you to explain to me who this emily mead chick is and uh, what this is this a movie oh. called uh, Nerve or what yes. is this? Tell me so, about this. Anyway, so there's a uh, new release movie. It's called Nerve, and Nerve is a 
I'd call it like a crime action thriller type of thing. And it's now the funny thing is it's PG 13 and it's, it's about a group of high school students who they play this online game called nerve and they dare each other to do kind of, you know, increasingly risky activities, right? So they dare this, they dare this Emily Mead to, and they all got, they're all playing the game. So they all, want to keep doing it so it just gets progressively as you can imagine scarier and scarier well right this girl is a cheerleader and they're at like an assembly i believe and you got the guys in the back the football Mm. players and then the all the cheerleaders in their outfit the band all the people in the stands and this little emily mead who's so hot and she's in her cheerleading outfit they dare her to moon the crowd so she doesn't wear her little underpants wow and in the middle of the assembly in front of the whole audience just flashes ass to the um you know to the uh to the entire crowd oh my god i was a cheerleader in high school and it was actually the same colors it's really funny i'm getting flashbacks and they make you wear these huge bloomers underneath and i Mm -hmm. remember that I would pull the bloomers up my ass to make it into like a, a cheeky kind of half underwear thing because that's oh they were so full. That's as much as you could pull it up. And I remember worrying so badly. Oh, my God. Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get suspended? So when I'm watching this scene of her doing the full Monty flash is making me kind of terrified. I'm understanding <laughs> how intense of a dare this actually is because to go pantyless or bloomerless underneath your cheer outfit is uh, significant. I think that's so. <laughs> yeah, it's so sexy. Now, every all the guys here are like, oh, we need pictures of that from you, uh, high school cheerleading. You know, so that be- <laughs> as we all know, I can still fit into my outfit, so I could just oh uh, maybe maybe could go to mom's imagine? attic. Yes. And- <laughs> get that t- <laughs> get that Twitter account going. Yes, little, uh, I'm like, give me maybe a, give me an A. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Mister Skid. Yeah, I'll make no that problem. happen for you. <laughs> well, anyway, it, um, I did a uh, when I saw this. I had a flashback. You had a flashback <gasps> yes. pulling your bloomers up your butt. Well, I had a flashback to my favorite uh, cheerleader pantyless moment was one of my favorite movies from the 80s. And guys my age would know it. It's probably, I don't know if you'd know it. It's called Hollywood Nights. It's a Mm-mm. 1980 movie. It had Tony Danza, Michelle Pfeiffer, New Bomb Turk <laughs> was the, uh, 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 what's, who am I thinking of? Our list, New Bomb Turk. What the hell's McP? What's his name? Yeah, Robert Wool. Well, anyway, great cast, yeah. Oh my God, what a great, great movie. Well, there was a scene where Michelle Drake, so the whole cheerleading group is um, uh, <laughs> out there performing for the school. Now, in this instance, this wasn't a dare. This girl, Michelle Drake, just forgot to wear her panties. Now, like, could that as an ever actress? happen? Like she just no 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 it, it, like as part of the, the show like at the movie they did this as a funny scene oh. but she so she's jumping up and down and all these <laughs> old guys veterans of the life. army and all right okay that's what I figured <laughs> but I, it's, it's a fantasy it's a fantasy <laughs> but to me that was the greatest um, cheerleader forgetting her panty moment in the history of movies so I I saved that I pulled that up for you so you could see it but it's, everyone it's, needs to go to yeah. MrSkinPodcast dot com right now and get on the link to this because I'm looking at it now and it is super. Super sexy. And yeah. the, the old guy's reaction to it is literally giving me a heart yeah, attack. Yeah, right they had now. a bunch of veterans there for the big assembly, and they and all the <laughs> veterans are freaking out, and it's really funny. But anyway, Hollywood Nights, one of the great movies of the 1980s, one of the great teen sex comedies of all time. And uh, uh, that, that scene from Nerve just reminded me of it. So I'm glad you, glad you brought up Emily Mead because I'm a big fan. <laughs> Now, I want to talk to you about this movie on Showtime, or is it a series called X-Rated 2, The Greatest Adult Stars of All Time? Because a lot of time we don't talk about adult stars because, hey, they're already naked. Like, we Mm -hmm. don't have to, you know, screenshot them and go to the exact minute and hour that they're naked. They're always naked. So what is this movie about? uh, Well, it's not. It's a documentary. And the reason I brought it up is this Friday night, um, X-Rated 2, The Greatest Adult Stars of All Time will debut on Showtime. At 11.30 Eastern, 10.30 Central, and this documentary will be hosted by me, Mr. <gasps> Skin. Yeah, this is yeah. the documentary you did? Yes. So, oh yeah, it's God. airing on Showtime. I so, can't believe it. Like, I, t- I told my wife, I go, you know what? Friday night, we got a TiVo. I'm yes. the host of this thing. Now, I think <gasps> I told you, I, I don't, I think we're, yeah, we were doing the podcast when I uh, taped this. I remember this, um, you mentioned it. Yeah. Well, I was out in LA and I had to do, it's one of the most stressful things I ever had to do because number one, you know, I, I do this Mr. Skin stuff, but I don't do a ton of television and I had to, um, it, I, I remember I got there at eight in the morning in LA for the shoot. I left at 10 at night and it was nonstop. 
um, I had to, you know, record a bunch of takes of these different uh, things. So I basically I'm I'm the host, and I had all the interstitial stuff where like I introduced the show, and then in between different segments, I I talk a little about what was going on. It was kind of weird because number one, I think we talked about this where when you tape these things, people don't realize it, but you sit around while they're getting the set ready and there's a lot of like just doing nothing but right then when it's you hurry actually up and wait is what we call it right. hurry up and wait <laughs> but then when you but then when you actually have to um do your thing you know sometimes there's time limits or that you know you got a lot of things to do in the course of the day so you can't screw up mm-hmm. there's n- there's no more pressure than because I didn't have Q, you know I didn't have um a teleprompter or anything no. and I had to do these like like these you know pretty long little Ta- you know like segments. explanations voiceover yeah, explanations like just what's explaining going on. everything yeah so i'm freaking all these guys like the sound guys and the camera guys and all, you know the director they're all standing there and Welcome i'm staring to my at world, you like, babe. oh my god <laughs> yeah and it's it was it was really like there was a lot of pressure because if you even if you screw up one word you got to yeah. do it again you know and yeah. you're, you're trying and in some instances i'd be walking like i remember there's one scene you'll see in this if you if you check it out on showtime oh, I'm, I'm gonna watch it Oh my God. Well, anyway, I'm like, I have to start walking behind a couch and on the couch (laughs) is this guy and this girl having sex. So I have to like walk around the couch and then walk in front of the couch and then start walking towards the camera, introducing the next segment of uh, the show. So you have blocking, you have movement, you have cues, you have have dialogue, all this stuff. Uh, And there's no teleprompter. There's no cue card. No, no teleprompter. I can't. Until you've done something like this, you, you it's do nerve wracking. It's really because I don't do it for a living either, so I don't have that um, confidence of of. It. So it was like a very stressful day for me. I remember there's there's one scene in here where we get into like the porn, the adult stars that were more into like the the bondage and the sexy, you know, the the more graphic stuff. And while I'm talking behind me, are two girls like spanking each other, and <laughs> to me. It was so cool watching them set up because they had to like <laughs> tie one down and then the other had the little, hor- you know, that horse whip thing going. And yes, my God, it, it was it was very, you know, there was a, just a lot of things going on behind the scenes. But anyway, X rated to the greatest adult stars of all time uh, very this cool. Friday night, October 28th. Um, and then I heard that not only will it debut Friday, but it airs like. 12 times in the first two weeks on Showtime and it's it's always going to be kind of late at night because this is definitely adult and by the oh, way for sure these are the greatest adult stars so of course Johnny Watt Holmes is one of them it's male and female that we talk about in the in the documentary but you got to see Andrea just for curiosity's sake yeah th- Johnny Watt Holmes soft is bigger than any penis I've ever seen in my life how, it is how big was it soft give me give me a, it, it, an it, had to, it was like had to be 13 inches oh. and no no i'm not exaggerating and he's, I don't there's a think scene where he's just standing My there just shriveled up in fear yeah, oh. yeah. I, it's probably was more like 10 inches but to me it looked like 13 inches that it's the most crazy. fascinating thing i've ever seen is johnny white <laughs> holmes standing there soft is part well, of one of the things but yeah wow so i'm i'm probably going to end up watching this on demand because yeah it's going to air a certain amount of times but it will be available on showtime uh, showtime on demand i'm sure now i'm scrolling to the pictures on the showtime website and mm-hmm. i'm noticing a man that looks very familiar to me is the director adam rifkin the director of homo erectus they interview him yeah he's one oh, of the guys they interview. okay because yeah. i was like yeah, there we go actually they interviewed um Whoopi goldberg's interviewed in there steven cool. soderbergh and uh and then of course all the adult stars it was cool they interview seika today you know remember because she's because it's the history so it's uh actresses wow. from the 70s 80s well, 90s and you uh, are the in new great millennium. company mr skin and i i think you should find it quite an honor that you they they entrusted you with hosting this because this is well, a big deal I'm yeah. so proud of you. Aww. Well, think about it. Uh, <laughs> the biggest surprise to me is when Showtime said, yeah, sure, Mr. Skin could host it because I thought there's no fucking way they're going to let me host something on Showtime. So <laughs> but anyway, they were the cool thing, and let baby. me do it. So, oh, yeah. I'm so happy for you. That's exciting. Now, I know it's the time of the year where everyone's getting dressed up for Halloween and it's a bunch of sexiness and scariness, but I know that you have your top three horror movie nude scenes of all time, according to you. So let's talk about those. Yeah. Now, one of the things, there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. First of all, this time of the year at our website, and, and you know, with horror movies, just as anyone who's been watching Dan television or movies. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. peanut butter and jelly, horror movies and nudity. There's some of the great nude scenes of all time have come from horror movies. And we're we're going to have at our website 
all week like we're gonna have playlists and top 10 lists and nice. it's gonna be spooky uh a lot of boobs at our website so like uh, <laughs> sexiest scream queens vampire the best sexiest vampire uh nude scene skin gloria uh which is something we came up with which is uh nude scenes where you're covered in blood Ooh, and uh yeah. yeah we're gonna have that so i just thought it would be fun just for you and me to talk about like People ask me, and I'll probably do some radio this week, where I go over my um, my favorite horror movie nude scenes of all time, you know, like Fangs for the Mammaries uh, type of stuff, where people <laughs> will ask me, uh, what, what do I think are the greatest celebrity horror nude scenes of all time? So here are my three that I, I just, throughout the history of my website, I always seem to bring these up. Now, a couple things. The, the horror movie... They're in horror movies, but the horror movie doesn't have to be good. It just has to have a great nude scene. And, uh, <laughs> and these have to be famous people. So to give you an idea, right. some of my favorites would definitely from the uh, 80s, the 83 is uh, Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon in The Hunger. Wow. The, the lesbian vampire sure. scene. Yeah. I mean, you get Susan Sarandon and Catherine Deneuve. Um, Undressing each other, going at it. It's it's got the vampire element. They're mm. gorgeous. They were at the you know Susan Sarandon was like ridiculously at the, you know, at the top of her game, looking uh, like her Deneuve. daughter in this with smaller yeah, I know. boobs. Isn't that funny? Yeah, isn't yeah. that? She looks like Eva Moria a little in that. Yes, and uh, yes. Catherine Deneuve's you know both you know they're both world famous. Catherine Deneuve at one point was considered the most beautiful woman in the world. Did a lot of nudity in the sixties and seventies, but in nineteen eighty three. When this happened, this was one of the great moments in celebrity nudity in a horror movie. So definitely have to have Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon on that list for well, sure. Well, let's not forget the third star of this scene, the mirror. I yeah, mean, right. uh, <laughs> thank God for mirrors. It's so hot because you see Susan Sarandon from the front and then you see an incredible ass reflected in the back. I mean, yes. so hot. Yeah, we call that ah. 360 nudity. Yes. Oh, yeah. nice. No nice. question. So there's a um, name for it. It's fantastic. Yeah, David Bowie was in that movie, so it's kind of a cool. Uh, it's it's kind of a cool uh, flick. So the hunger, but awesome. Here, here's another one that I just love because um, it's 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 not a great horror movie, but it it features something that I don't think a lot of people know about. It's Drew Barrymore and Doppelganger, the evil within. Okay. And okay. the reason I love this now, forget the she's in the shower and the shower water turns to blood and it's oh. pretty it's pretty disgusting at the end of the yeah. scene but people don't realize this um drew barrymore when she was 18 years old had like d to double d natural boobs i'm saying double d dude double yeah, and, d right and she had them reduced so this is the only known scene of drew barrymore where you saw her her true boobs and wow they're monstrous and she's yes. a huge celebrity and it's it's just a great nude scene if you don't mind that the shower water <laughs> turns to blood but it's a it's a great great nude scene no it's fantastic because not only do you see her naked and you know they're wet and everyone loves wet wet tits, she's whether suds they're blood them or up. Water or she's suds she's, them up she's groping her huge boobs it's so hot it's so fucking sexy so thank you for uh you know finding this gem for us well and a that- little <laughs> trivia too is uh people uh there were other uh, i remember a uh, uh, soleil moon fry punky uh brewster got right. her her punky boobsters reduced also so um <laughs> drew barrymore was a child star who grew up to have these huge boobs she had them reduced punky brewster did it you know, it happens. I, I'm I guess totally so. against that kind of uh, surgery, but uh, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, so if you're uh, a fan of Drew Barrymore and a little trivia, this scene in Doppelganger is the only time you could see her with her true double D's, which is spectacular. And we will link to that on the Mr. Skin Podcast dot com. Yes. Yes, we will. Excellent. Yes, we will. Excellent. Now, also, last but not least, um, in the history of Mr. Skin dot com, if you asked me that um, what was the most Fa- uh, popular actress in the history of your website i would have to say she may not be number one but she's so uh far up the list it's Alyssa milano wow because she's yeah. the girl next door yeah yeah i don't know i don't know why um it is i i can speculate you know f- Wishful guys grew thinking. up with her on who's the boss yeah. <laughs> and she was just like this you know tony danza's daughter and she's always kind of kept in the spotlight uh maybe over the last few years not as much but from 1999 when i launched my site through the probably the first 10 to 12 years 
you know, generations of people grew up with her. She's now a sports mm-hmm. chick. She's just, there's something about her guys absolutely love, maybe because she's also incredibly hot. Yes. And um, she did a movie in the 90s called Embrace of the Vampire. Now, I would not recommend this as a movie to watch <laughs> on, on Halloween because you want to watch a great horror movie. It's, it's no it's no actual Halloween or Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street type of movie. Got but, you. So skip the movie, go straight to Mr. Skin for the nude scene. Yes. And okay. actually, ex- this Alyssa Milano in Embrace of the Vampire, she's being photographed by Charlotte Lewis. Okay. And it is, I still, every time I go on radio shows, uh, and we get to talking about this. People are blown away that Alyssa Milano actually did um, a nude scene this good. And it really is sexy because uh, Charlotte Lewis undoes her shirt and they start kissing and she's topless. And um, like I said, she and, and that actually was um, her kind of, you know, it was like her her nude debut. So and this was it the was first a spectacular, time yeah. ever. She did other nude scenes, but this is the one at the 50 minute mark of uh, Embrace of the Vampire. That's where you want to fast forward if you have a chance. And again, it's not a great horror movie. It's, um, it's you, you know, you don't watch it on Halloween, but every other yeah. day of the year, please watch Embrace of the Vampire for the greatest celebrity nude scene in a horror movie. Alyssa and- Milano. In, you and I, Mr. Skin, you and I have over the past decade have talked about Alyssa Milano and her boobs. Now, these are, regardless of how small they are, they're they're enhanced, correct? Yeah, and that's the thing. I am not a fan, as I've told you many times, of um, fake boobs. But I've always said that if if I had to choose a pair of fake breasts that I think are awesome it's Alyssa milano's fake i think whoever did the work on these did a, did an, a great great job they they really did because one they didn't go too big so they're not obvious and mm-hmm. uh, they have a nice little hang and they just look really good on her body well i am i'm really excited to check out all these things you mentioned uh i'm actually maybe gonna watch some horror movies or yeah, at least go to well, your website yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be loaded up our website's gonna have so much stuff i, sh- I do want to mention um that uh, we there is a movie a, a horror movie that I wanted to touch on really quick that I want to okay. give this woman some uh, publicity because I, I'm so blown away by this and I think you would love this too and you should if you have a chance you should watch the trailer for this it's called the okay. Love Witch uh, the movie's called the Love Witch okay. and it uh, it's been uh, the trailer's been floating around for about I think nine months or so and this girl. Anna Bilar, I know she posted this, and we've been tracking it because we've been waiting for the movie to come out. And I don't know if she's like Hawaiian, but she looks a little like Katie Mixon. There's something about her. I don't mm. know what nationality is. She's gorgeous. But she did a movie in 2007 called Viva, which um, we have at our website, where, where she was actually nude in it. But in this one, um, uh, I'm not sure if she is. I haven't seen the movie yet, but uh, the main character, Samantha Robinson, is because we've seen the trailer. And I want to tell you why I love her stuff. So she okay. she does, she works on these movies. The detail, she, she's like, everything she does is like a tribute to 1960s pulp novels, like the Russ Meyer type of stuff where they're all hyper gl- glamorous, um, mm-hmm. lush, technicolor, visually rich. Uh, that's kind of her trademark. And if you watch this trailer, you'll know what I'm saying. The most beautiful, the women are beautiful. They're all natural. Um, the colors just pop. And okay. it's just like, it, it's just something. If you're really into um, that era, that, um, y- you know, that, that uh, p- pulp fiction y type of uh, yeah. era, it, it's uh-huh. really great. And this Love Witch is supposedly, I heard a rumor that it's going to be playing in Chicago at the. Oh. Um, at the Cisco Center, uh, it, it's not out. You know, it's not out yet. Uh, so, is it going to be one of these limited release movies forever, or is it planning to do a wide release? You know, I don't know. I, well, I don't You're think like, it'll I be ever know, be. A, I don't ever think do. it'll be a wide release. But <laughs> I just wanted to call it out. It's called. Check it out. Um, go online and look up the Love Witch the trailer, sure. and and okay. you'll know what I'm saying. We're really really into it. It's like a. It'll be like at the best, it'll be a cult movie that plays an art house type of thing. But um, this girl, this Anna Bilar, puts so much. Um, it's just something you just don't see much. Is that ode to the to the nineteenth, like the Valley of the Dolls type of uh, right? Uh, mo- you know what Aesthetic. I'm talking about? Style yes. and even even the um, when you watch the trailer, it's all like 1960s cars and clothing and haircuts and makeup and just really really cool stuff. So I I'm just wanted to talk about it the week of uh, uh, Halloween here uh, and hopefully this thing will uh, get get out there and we can put it up at the website but for now the trailer has incredible uh, 
uh, stuff. And she supposedly works on these things for years, and it, it definitely shows. So the love awesome. witch, little little call out uh, uh, before we wrap up the podcast. Well, today. you have given us a lot to chew on, and I know I have my homework <laughs> cut out for me. I'm going to get up on that love witch uh, trailer, and I'm going to catch up on all the hot host nudity in Westworld. So. Thank you so much, Mr. Skin. And I want to remind everyone, join us next week for more TV nudity, more movie nudity, and all the naked happenings in pop culture. We'll see you guys again next time. MrSkin.com. Fast forwarding to the good parts.